Hello YouTube and welcome back. This is Nico and you're watching Dare to Game. Today we're playing Mountain Blade Warband and we're looking at some more troops. Today's troops we're looking at are the five best cavalry units in Mountain Blade Warband. Now cavalry is probably my favorite in the game, so this one took the most time for me to really decide which, I want, which way I wanted to rank this. But, so this is going to go like before, I'll give brief descriptions of each one and we'll rank them from five to one. So let's just jump right into that. So before we get started with number five, again, like always, I want to note that these are the five best cavalry units in the game, but they're not the five only cavalry units in the game. So even at number five, the one that's ranked lowest on this list, it's still better than a lot of other cavalry units in the game. So with that in mind, let's just jump into number five, which is Vajir Knights. So Vajir Knights are a lighter cavalry force that possesses heavy armor on the rider, but unarmored, yet fast horses and two-handed shieldless weapons that make for an impressive initial charge that can cut unprepared our enemies to ribbons in the initial wave. But when they inevitably get stuck in melee combat, combat they are terribly weak and unlikely to last long. Major knights require more commander supervision to use properly, demanding being pulled in and out of combat to make use of their impressive charge, which in turn requires that the player manually supervise combat rather than participate in it. All this in mind, the Vajir Knights are pretty cheap to train as far as top tier cavalry units in the game go. And if you're one of those people that likes to lead the charge over and over again, you know, just charge, pull your troops back out, re, you know, put them in a new formation and then charge again, you can easily win battles with these troops. But if you're one of those people that doesn't like to micromanage during a battle, this is probably not the cavalry units for you. So at number four we have the Kurgit Lancers. The Kurgit Lancers have only occasionally armored horses and alternate between having an axe or sword and shield or a two-handed weapon that leaves the man, and possibly also the horse, unshielded and vulnerable to missile fire. As lighter cavalry, they tend to perform better on the open plains and steppes where they can maneuver for multiple hit-and-run attacks rather than staying in melee. And in me melee, they tend to go down faster than heavier, heavier cavalry does. Commanders will get more from this unit if they take advantage of the mobility of these units by ordering those types of hit and run attacks manually. Although this takes time and the player may not have if they are fighting for their own lives in melee combat. So these are slightly better than the uh, Vajir Knights, but they fall to the same problems. If you want to use these troops effectively, you really need to be commanding them individually. So at number three we have one of the more interesting units in the game, the Sword Sisters. Sword Sisters, first of all, are trained from uh, female peasants that you, you know, you can pick up a long time in the game. If you max them all the way out, this is what they become. So, Sword Sisters are equipped with the heaviest attainable armors in the game, plate mail gauntlets, plate boots, and steel shields. But oddly, will occasionally go without any helmet at all, presumably to let you see their hair and let you know that they're female. Giving them, you know, a certain portion of these troops a glaring weak point. They also ride in on lighter coursers, which make them vulnerable to dismounting. They are significantly less expensive than standard cavalry, and their top-tier armor and close-range weaponry makes them usually very durable outside of headshots, in a melee brawl, so they are not to be discounted. They are, however, not easy to levy replacements for when one of them falls in battle, as the only way to raise sword sisters is to rescue female peasants, or refugees from bandits, and train them through several ranks of generally worthless infantry units, Ultimately, while not a bad unit, the difficulty in easily replacing them will probably mean they see less use unless players purposefully go out of their way to try to use female troops. Generally what I do, just because I really like them, they're a cool troop, is I, every single time I get a peasant, I train it all the way up to the sword sister, a female peasant I should say, and then I put them in one of my castles or places to build up a whole army of like 140 of them, and they're really good troops once you do. But, so that's number three. So at number two for cavalry units, we have the Serenid Mamluks. So Serenid Mamluks are functionally almost identical to Swadian knights in Warband, and as such, they can be used almost inter interchangeably with each other. Mamluks are slightly less armored than Swadian knights, but have an advantage in blunt weaponry, making them useful in acquiring more captives to sell to the ransom broker, which helps to pay for their high salary. They also have two more points in riding over the Swadian knights, making them faster and more agile, making them suitable for chasing down horse archers. However, they sometimes are equipped with an unarmored but faster horse, which means that they can much more quickly get dismounted. So while some people may put the serenid Mamluks at first, I can't because the number one spot belongs to the strongest overall unit in the game, at least my opinion. So at number one we of course have Swadian Knights. 
And uh, Swadian Knights are considered top tier cavalry for their chargers, which are extremely durable, and they're generally heavy arms and armor. They carry a lance, the highly durably, durable knightly heater shield, and an arming sword or morning star for close range. Their cavalry charge is fearsome, but they are not lacking in melee capacity either. These units are equally suited to overwhelming most armies on the field, and when unhorsed, they make an extremely effective infantry unit when besieging a town or castle. Overall, they are considered by many, including myself, to be the best unit in the game. The only drawback is that they require quite a bit of time to train, and they are pretty expensive to maintain. But if you're looking for something, if for a powerful army, especially late game, you cannot go wrong with Swadian Knights. Congratulations on making it to the end of the video. If you did, I can assume you liked the content, and hopefully you'll subscribe and turn on the notification bell. If you haven't already, check out these links I have on the screen to see me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. If you like my content and would like to support what I do here, there's a link to my Patreon account in the description, and a donation would be much appreciated. In any case, thanks for watching, and have a nice day.